Um, how does that hurt, or do you, do you have a desire to go with Uh, no, actually, pretty much all of it was made like in engine. That uh, we have our own editor, uh, and it works a little bit like a Google SketchUp. Uh, it's all in 3D, but you get to rotate the camera around, and you're, you're building everything out. The, the, the tiles you see are like blocks in the editor. It's very modular, and I kind of like extrude them and carve into them, and I paint the right type. Uh, like I'll paint the orange block with the grass on top, uh, and I just kind of look around it. I flatten it in 2D, and I, you know, I have to consider everything working on four different sides. Uh, it, was, it was years of trial and error. Like the first few years of development, uh, we thought we were in production. We thought we were putting levels in the bank. Uh, but really, it was all prototyping. We didn't realize it for some reason. It took a while before uh, we could be honest with ourselves. It's like, uh, nothing that we've done in two years is actually good. We've just been like feeling things out, figuring out what kind of level works and what kind of doesn't. And uh, at that point, in the next three years, um, yeah, I, just, I just got better at it, actually. Is there ever like a tinge of regret that it took that process took so long for you guys? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so by the time it comes out, it's five years. Twenty-six. That's nearly a fifth of my life I've spent working on this game so far. And a lot of it you just work in, in isolation. You can't show it all the time. Um, you don't get a lot of gratification or reward out of it. You just you know work your ass off for five years and your entire life falls apart. That, I think that's, that's cool. I think it's awesome for, for video game consumers. You know, I find that the, like the process of making games is really oblique in that I don't know that people necessarily understand why something would take five years or, you know, what. It's really lazy. It's lazy developers. <laughs> it's mostly, mostly sleeping. Yes, yeah. for the time. Uh, was there like a particular moment for you guys where you were able to crystallize what the actual idea for Fez was um, like during development? Or well, the, the basic idea of like rotating in this world and playing from a 2D perspective was, was always there. Uh, originally, Fez was this other game that I was making with uh, Sean McGrath, who's now working on Daya, uh, the, the kind of weird and template racing game. Um, and it was his idea originally to, to have a, a 3D world that you would rotate. Um, we were collaborating uh, together on that. Uh, it didn't get very far. Like it was, it was never, uh, never got past like an early prototyping. But we had a, a kind of disagreement on the direction that we wanted to take the game in, and it just kind of had this, this falling out. Um, and I ended up going my own way because after the fact, I, I had the whole like uh, 3D pixel aesthetic idea that I really grew uh, to be a fashion. Uh, but it always started with that basic idea of exploring 3D spaces from for uh, seeing 2D points of view. Then everything else kind of just organic from there. So is the thing with the characters, when you talk to the characters in the town, they say things like, you know, that looked like a cube, or that was really cool what just happened there. So is the idea that the characters in the town just don't understand that there's a three-dimensional world out there? If you'll notice, that there's one side of the village where uh, people are, and it's kind, of, it's kind of neat, and the other ones are like a little bit and like unkempt because People won't go there. They're not even aware that there are other sides of the village. So, so, so who put that stuff on the other side of the village? Who would be? <laughs> <laughs> You're not in your question. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's kind of, that's kind of a story. There's not much of a story in fact, but it's all kind of in the background, in the environment. You can, you can, you can piece together uh, certain truths. Uh, and everything's kind of a big mystery. It's the, yeah, why, why are these two people living in this video world? That doesn't make sense. So again, I'm thinking like influences for you guys. I mean, you know, I remember reading like The Giver, for example, as a child. And, you know, there's a big reveal of that in terms of the world you think actually exists, it doesn't exist. Were there other non influences that you were thinking about in terms of you know, sort of a world that exists but you just can't like see it? That that whole idea of like reality not being real kind of it came pretty late in development actually, and it, it was kind of a weird reflection of my my own feelings of how I felt about my life at that point, it's like, which was non-existent. Um, and the whole kind of theme of this uh, universe growing unstable, which, well, you can't see it right now, but uh, as you play through the game, like these black holes start opening everywhere, and uh, the universe basically begins to fall apart. And that's why you collect these little cubes. They're, they're very important for reasons that I won't get into now. Um, but yeah, you, you kind of have to put the universe back together before it just completely collapses around. 
I mean, I suppose there's like, there could be like a didactic reading there. And, you know, the world's a lot bigger. I mean, is this your message to you? Designers, and there's a, a bigger world out there to explore. That's not what I got. Oh, yeah, I'm going to show you something special. So here's the map. It's a pretty map. Um, one thing that a lot of people don't know about this is that it's basically a natural vein. It's a huge, open, nonlinear world that is structured uh, a lot like the first Zelda, and that you can play it in any order. There's no critical path, and that's why there aren't really any story beats in the game, because you can it in any order you want. Uh, it's really all about just exploring this big world. Um, so these are all the rooms that I've seen so far. I'm just going to do a little, uh, little debug thing, show you the entire uh, whoa, uh, the entire unlocked map, show you the size of the world. So that's the world of Fez. There's over 150 places uh, split. Them. Yes, please run with applause. Come on. Uh, that's what I like, actually do like, as a game, because I, you know, I hear game designers often talk about that, about how they don't want to give players, or not to let these new things in any order. Do you still, at the same time, you know, I'm sure, I don't know, I guess if I designed a car, for example, you could drive it anywhere, but I'm sure if you just, you know, took it to really boring places, I mean, I'd bump. I mean, do you, do you feel like that as a game designer, even though you put in, you're trying to give players a lot of choice, that you still feel like, Oh, if you go to this place first, the game feels more... Do you have any preferences whatsoever? No, everybody's going to get a completely different experience, just depending on which door they find first and which which area. There's like five, five, five main areas um, that are like magically different, and there's lots of sub-areas that also have different themes. Um, and I, I had to design this, this world knowing that people would experience it uh, one way or another. And like, it's not just an open world, it's kind of like an open design that it really is just a big place. I really wanted to go for a strong sense of place. Uh, there's, you know, there's quite a lot of backtracking in Fez on purpose because I wanted to breed like family area with the environments. I wanted to be on places that you were uh, accustomed to, that you knew well. Um, you know, every area has different music. Uh, a lot of the, the playtesting we've been doing, people will find uh, an area that they really like the music in and they'll just like, they just kind of stand there. They do nothing, they just kind of take it in and watch the, the time of day go by. Uh, we're just about done. Uh, we have any time to get it. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I, I feel like, uh, do you have a favorite, do you have a favorite place in Fed, along those lines? Places that like, you feel is your sanctuary, your home, anything? Yes, the, there's one very, very soup room that you can only unlock once you've found absolutely everything in the game. So nobody's ever going to see it. But it has the So is that intentional? Because that's your favorite place. Yeah. How you well, no, it just, how you deliberately hide it from that it just, it just became my favorite place. It, it was always an intention. I had like, that one really secret room. But there's just the most heartbreaking music in it. And it's just kind of a one of the live and in space, and it's not much there. It's just sad as fuck for some reason. <laughs> and I love it. Sure. I mean, I guess I'm of two minds about it. I guess at the same time, you know, that the likelihood of me seeing that room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's your that's your special place. Yeah. There's there's a lot like half the content in Fez is secret or hidden. Uh, most people won't see all the game. I think all the best stuff, like the weirdest stuff, is all uh, secret and really like put away, like complicated, hard to find. Because uh, that's the whole game. It's exploration and discovery. That's our feedback loop. You go around exploring, then you find this weird secret door, and you figure out how to open it, and then you get this, this big wow moment when you get there. Um, it looks completely different, it looks weird, or has some, some bizarre new behavior or something like that. I can see you basically like, uh, hiding Christmas presents from your children, saying like, like, the joy of the inspiration. <laughs> it's it's also so great. It'll, it'll mean a lot more if you don't find it. Um, okay, great. I think that's basically that's, about, that's it. about it. Um, yeah, this is more or less where I want to stop. Uh, thank you to Mr. Fish. Uh, My pleasure. We're going to turn it over to Jane and get some Thank you. Thank you.